Hey, how's it going, everybody? Jeremy here. We're in Psalm 33 today, so let's read it, we'll talk about it, and then we'll pray. I've seen it a bunch of times while going through the book of Psalms, how there's certain times where we're reading and studying a psalm that completely connects to something else that's happening in the vertical church ministries. Uh, and I, I saw that when we were going through the end times class, uh, going through the book of Revelation. Um, there are so many times that what we were learning about in the book of Psalms connected to what we were learning about in the book of Revelation. And same thing happened today. Uh, so Sunday night, we had an awesome worship night where we came together as a church, uh, we prayed to the Lord, we prayed for each other, we lifted up the Lord in song, we, we sang, we, we played, uh, we read through Second Chronicles, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but um, the, the subject matter was praying and worshiping God before any of our problems, before looking inward, we would look at God. We would focus on God. That's what the night was all about. 2020 has kind of pushed us to look inward, unfortunately, and it's a bad thing. It is, a, it is an unhealthy thing. And so 2021, I wanted to start it off January. I wanted to focus completely and utterly on the goodness of God and who He is. Not our problems, not our uh, the Lord delivering us from what we're going through, even though He does that. And even though we pray for Him to do that, instead of focusing on our issues, I wanted to focus on God. And so this psalm, Psalm 33, it starts off talking about worship, about singing, about praising, and even about using musical instruments to do it. So when it says, shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous, and it says, praise befits the upright, that's the first verse. First off, it's calling the righteous, and we know the Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. That's our story before Christ. After we come to Christ, we are considered saints. We're considered righteous. And so it's saying shout for joy. If you really understand how you've been saved, if you really understand the price that's been paid for you, then you would shout for joy. Uh, that is what praise is, shouting for joy in the Lord. Okay, Not just because you're happy, not just because you're excited, but because you are shouting for joy in the Lord. Verse 2, it says, give thanks to the Lord with a lyre. That's not a guy that's telling a fib. <laughs> the lyre was a guitar. It was like a guitar-style instrument. Okay, and it says, make melody to him with a harp of ten strings. Okay, this awesome ten-string instrument. Uh, you know, unfortunately, throughout church history, there's been many people who have not wanted to have any musical accompaniment in their church services. Even a guy that I... I really revere a guy that I, I read about a lot, Charles Spurgeon. He's a great theologian. Uh, and, and in his church services, he did not have pianos or organs. He didn't have any kind of a stringed instrument. It was strictly the, the voices. But the, the, he, he wasn't against other people doing that. He just didn't think it was right for his church to have that. Um, and it, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that not everybody has to be the same, but the Lord has said it in His Word that using instruments, building instruments like David even has done to glorify the, the Lord is, is a good thing. It says in verse 3, sing to Him a new song, play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. Um, the new song thing, it doesn't mean what's, you know, what's came out on the Christian billboard, uh, what's the you know, hit Christian song of the day. That's not necessarily what's being talked about. It, it, it means that we shouldn't just focus on or, or, or rest on the fact that God has done great things in the past. We should continually be making new songs about the glory of God. It should be a fresh thing in our heart. Uh, and I know that you might be saying, well, I don't play an instrument, I don't sing. There's a theologian that his name was Horn. He said this. He said that it is not as much the importance of the voice in praise or in the guitar or organ or piano to, to play um, beautifully before the Lord. The most important piece of worship to the Lord is the human heart. Is the human heart. 
It is our life. It is using our life for worship. Uh, well, it's funny, too, because this is why it connects. Because last Sunday at the worship night, we sang what was called the doxology. It is a, a famous hymn uh, that says, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It's a song of, of praising God for his continual blessings. You know, it's almost like praising God before times get hard, but praising God in the good times. Uh, but So we sang that as a team. We sang that as a church. But I had the drummers do something funny. There is a, an, an ancient uh, Jamaican beat uh, it's called a Nyabingi beat, but what it actually means is it's the heartbeat drum beat. And I had them do this, and, and not because I had any philosophical or biblical reason, um, but just because this heartbeat drum beat is a way to, that we, maybe we could keep, uh, maybe we, could, we can, as a church, come together and focus on the heartbeat of what God has done kind of bring the, uh, God's glory and goodness to our heart. And so the drummers were doing this beat, which is do, 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 do. It's just this heartbeat thing, right? And we sang, praise God from whom all blessings flow. This heart being the center of our worship to the Lord. It says this in, in verse 4, For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves the righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Uh, you know, we unfortunately can look around at, in, in our times today and miss the steadfast love of God that's all around us. The fact that we can even breathe right now. The fact that we have food on our tables. The fact that we have uh, blessings galore. And, and we don't deserve it. It's all a gift to us. It's all been given to us by the Lord. And it's all around us. It's amazing. So verse 6, it says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. So at this section of the psalm, he goes into the fact that God has made everything. He's created everything. He's made everything. He's set everything in motion. And he continually sustains everything. It says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the breath of his mouth... All their host, right? In the beginning, Genesis 1.1, um, he said, let there be. The, his voice created everything. And, and then in John 1.1, it says this. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And listen to this. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So he made everything. He created everything. He sustains everything. Verse 7, he gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Uh, the, you know, the Lord has, has created dry land to appear in. And for the, the deep parts, the recesses of the ocean, if we were to really look and maybe even, I don't know if you've watched National Geographic television shows, but you've, you've seen the majesty of God's creation and the immense oceans and the, the vast depths of the sea. The Lord has done such amazing things with our world and with our solar system. In verse 8, he says, let all the inhabitants of the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Let's look at, the, at what God has done and, and, and stand in awe of the Lord. It says this in verse 9, For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. The Lord, with a sound of his voice, created everything and it stayed and it sustained. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the people. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generation. And then this, verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Our nation started on the foundation of, a, of Christianity. And so um, I believe that when a nation is, is secure and following the Lord, 
blessings just naturally come because that's what happens in knowing the Lord. That's what happens in following the Lord. Naturally, blessings happen. Uh, you don't necessarily deserve blessings to happen. You know, you can't just speak blessings into existence, no matter who says that. Um, there's, there's times when we do go through hardships. Even the famous verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, that says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord's, says the Lord plans to prosper you. Um, that's it's not necessarily saying that in every aspect of your life at all times you're going to be prospering and things are going to be just given to you. Uh, unfortunately, in that verse, God is saying that even though you people, you Israelites, are going into captivity and bondage and slavery, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, and that plans that for ultimately you will be blessed. And this is what happens to us. You know, ultimately, we are blessed by the Lord. Um, so in verse 12, when it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, that is true. Our nation would be blessed if we followed the Lord. Unfortunately, our nation does not follow the Lord anymore. It says, the people whom he has chosen as his, as his heritage. Um, it's great to come to know the Lord. It's greater to understand that he's chosen you to come to know him. So this is in verse 13. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of the men from where he sits enthroned. He looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. Okay, there's that language of the heart again. He's made the heart. He's uh, not only made it, but it pumps because he makes it to pump. And he says this in verse 16. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. This is what's so amazing. Sunday night, night of worship, uh, we're going through Second Chronicles. In Second Chronicles, uh, King Jehoshaphat has had some unfortunate situations. Uh, he's compromised with kings, and he's caused issues to happen. And, and at this moment, there's a great multitude in, in chapter 20 coming against him. Uh, uh, darkness. He is uh, about ready to go to war, and his defeat is imminent. It's a, it's a pretty bad situation. Um, but he, he comes to know what the Lord tells him. The Lord says that don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, because the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. It's this relying on the Lord that we have such a hard time doing for whatever reason, but when we rely on the Lord, when we praise Him first before we do anything else, when we do those kind of things, blessings come because our heart is right and our mind is right. We're focused on the Lord, not on our problems. And it puts everything to, into perspective, and it focuses everything razor sharp. Okay, so he, he, he hears the Lord telling him, don't be afraid, don't be dismayed, for the battle is not yours. But then he, he hears that what he needs to do in going into battle against this army, great multitude, he hears, send the singers and the instrument players Send the worship team before the army. Send the music before the shields and swords and chariots and horses. See, at this time, a horse was like the fighter jet of our time. It was a serious piece of military power. But the Lord's telling him, even before the horses, send the worship team. And no, I don't mean the modern American context of the worship team, which is some band you watch on stage. No, no, no. No, if you are a Christian and you worship the Lord with song, if you shout for joy in the Lord, you are the worship team. And so what he's saying is he's saying, send the worshipers first. And, and when he did that, everything worked. He, they didn't even fight. The battle was finished. The battle was over. He sent praise first. I hope that this is you today in the middle of your battle, in the middle of your problems. I hope you're able to praise God through it, to lift up the name of the Lord, to sing out to Him, to cry out to Him, to shout for joy in Him, because that's where breakthrough happens. I swear that is where breakthrough happens. It, it, it's not, your money's not going to save you. 
Your career is not going to save you. Your, your, your earthly power is just not going to save you. It's the Lord that is in control. It's the Lord that has all the power, all the strength. It's the Lord who helps us to get through anything that we go through. But can we live our life that way where we, before any kind of issue, before any kind of uh, you know, great multitude of problems that we have on our horizon, can we praise the Lord first? I think that this puts everything into perspective for us. He says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is in those who fear Him, on those who hope in His steadfast love. It says He delivers us. He keeps us from famine. The Lord protects us, right? Verse 20, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, for our heart is glad in Him. Do me a favor right now. Examine your heart. Are you glad in the Lord? You don't have to lie if you're not. Figure it out. Do, do uh, uh, an inventory of your soul. What is holding you back from being glad in the Lord? Do you not know Him deep enough? Do you not read about Him uh, frequently enough? Do you not talk to Him as much as you should? That kind of stuff is how we, we grow this gladness for the Lord in our heart. Because in verse 22 it says, Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us. And look at this, the very last phrase even as we hope in you. We can hope. We can, we can wait patiently. We can trust that the Lord will protect us through whatever comes. But can we not be a people who are afraid, who are frightened, who are beat down or pushed down in life? Can we be a, pa- a people who praise God in the midst of whatever army is against us, whatever darkness is in front of us, can we praise the Lord? Can we shout for His His glory? Can we praise Him with song and with singing? It doesn't matter about your voice. It matters about that thing that's inside of you, your heart. Can you make your heart to be focused on praising the Lord? I hope so. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God. We, we lift up your name just like we did Sunday night, Lord. We praise you for who you are and what you've done. And we know, Lord, that um, any kind of great multitude that is coming against us, any kind of darkness that we're dealing with, any kind of uh, problems or sorrows or depressions, whatever it might be, we know, Lord, that you are in control and you will keep us steady if we focus on you. It's kind of the same thing as, as Peter, Lord, as he steps out of the boat. As long as he was watching you, he was able to walk on water. As soon as he took his eyes off, he started to fall. Uh, Lord, we know that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And so we focus on who you are, and we shout for joy because we are yours. We love you, God. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks everybody. See you next week.